like holy water on my skin. A dead man walking, slave to sin. I want to know about being born again. I need you. Oh, I need you. So take me to the riverside. Take me up and baptize. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of symphony in my ears like holy water on my skin I don't want to abuse your grace God I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Come on. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my like sound of symphony to my ears, like holy water, your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips, like the sound of symphony to my ears, like holy water on my like holy water on my skin like holy water That's why Jesus said, who the man say that I am? 
And one of the disciples went there and said, Some say you're just a prophet. Some say you like Jeremiah. Some say that you're a liar. And Jesus looked at him and he said, Who do you? Who do you say? Because that's what matters. Who is Jesus to you? Who is he to you tonight? Is he just someone that you read on some pages? Or does he make life to you? Is he your very life tonight? You need to ask yourself, who is he to me? Because I can tell you, he's my everything. He's my rose of Sharon. He's my lily in the valley. He's my everything tonight. Hallelujah. That's where you got to be. You got to have Jesus at the front of all and everything or nothing. He said, if you're lukewarm, he said, I'll speak out yeah. yeah. Either we're going to serve God or we're going to serve the devil. There ain't no other option, y'all. Hallelujah. But we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to just, man, God's already here. I believe I fit. Man, God's already here. Man, Brother Jeremiah preached a dynamic message this morning. Hallelujah. Talking about that spirit. Hallelujah. Triumph. Man, we ought to wake up every morning with a spirit of triumph in our heart. That we're going to be victorious over every situation in our lives. Rather than sickness, you got victorious over that. Rather than some financial, you got victorious over that. You got to wake up every morning and every day and say, Flesh, I'm not going to let you win today. The spirit's going to try to help. Hallelujah. You got to press forward and act on that. Have a focus and act on that. Hallelujah. But if you will, let's all just go to the Lord in prayer, man. We got a man of God here. Hallelujah, man. And I know that the, 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 the preach word, if you be here right now, hallelujah. Let's all just go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, Lord. We thank you, God, for your wonderful presence. God, your presence, Lord, is everything to us. God, without your presence, Lord, we just up here as a singling brass and a tingling song. God, but I know your presence makes the difference, Lord. So God, send it down, Lord. Send it into someone's heart tonight. God, if they ain't saved, you save them. God, if they need a healing, God, you heal them. God, if they need a miracle, God, give them a miracle. God, and we ask you, Lord, all of this, hallelujah, in your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Worship with us tonight. Hallelujah. Go ahead.
is our strength. Uh, you only get stronger than you were when you came in. We're all working together. There's several different churches involved here tonight, different ones coming from different places. We appreciate you. And I want to tell you, it's just like one. Don't feel like it's a bunch of churches. It feel like the body of Christ. Well, that's what it's about. Woo, give the Lord a good break. for being here and uh, I want to just say uh, as we get into the word here in just a minute I want, I want to say thank you to those who are involved in this. Jeremy just asked for our venue here. He did the work and the other people I don't know who all but to get Brother Jeremiah in this area. He was down this way and preached this morning for Brother Damon and uh, Jeremy said would it be possible for him to be with and living word tonight? Absolutely. I Jeremiah, no, he can come to the word when nobody's even here. <laughs> you know, open the door. <laughs> Amen. Because uh, you know that, don't you? <laughs> he believes it. So I want to, uh, we're going to get turn it over to him in just a minute. But before we do that, I'd like uh, our usher, Bruce, if y'all will come tonight. And, uh, we want to uh, bless Brother Jeremiah and uh, Sister Jean and their ministry. Uh, we've been involved in the ministry at different times in different ways. But I want to tell you this, and before y'all take this up, I want to say this and pray with this often, but uh, I've been knowing, uh, knowing about Jeremiah and, and Miss Jean for 20-something years or more. I can't remember. I, I, I remember Bobby Walker and I were at the senior bowl, and he said, Jeremiah Castillo. I said, well, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. <laughs> And so we went over and introduced ourselves, and he came the next week or so. But anyway, he's been coming there ever since and being part of our lives. We communicate from time to time. But I want to say this about them. You know, you have a lot of people out there that have a lot of different areas of their life that nobody, uh, you know, is behind closed doors. This is a, a man and a woman of integrity. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I say that in, with tears. Because they're, they're few and far between yeah. us now in the church. Yes, yes, we got to get back to where the gospel, yeah. you don't have to wonder, can I finally find somebody that's got integrity and honesty? Oh. Uh, because that's the way it is, but it doesn't need to be that way. Yeah. And that's the reason you and I need to change that. That people will uh, respect the gospel, people will revere God, and they will take uh, a, a reverence not towards a man. Lord. towards the office and toward yeah. that that they stand for. Yeah. And I really appreciate them. And then being here with us tonight, we'll ask if you will to give because this will be totally for, for a blessing for them. And they have so many different areas they're working in and doing things and involved in. And uh, I won't try to go into all that. But the fact is that when men and women come into this church, we make sure that they leave here blessed. Amen. And we want to do that tonight. Not just blessed spiritually, not just blessed with friendship, but blessed financially tonight. So dig deep as they come and take up this offering. I'm going to pray with Father. God, you know all about it tonight, Lord. Yes. God, you're the one that can work things out. God, you're the one that's already fixed it all. And the power of the cross tonight, Lord God, gives us freedom and victory in every area of our lives. And, and we know tonight, Lord, that Brother Jeremiah and Sister Jane are here because they love you. They're here, God, because they want to bless somebody. And Lord, we want to be not only the recipients of the blessing, but God, we want to reciprocate by paying and, and giving back some blessing to them. And right now, in Jesus' name, we ask you to bless them and bless this offering according to your word. Amen and amen. amen.
special way. Uh, as I said, Brother Jeremiah is a man that we, uh, we uh, believe and, and, and know without any shadow of a doubt that he'll come with a word for you and a word from the Holy Spirit. And that makes all the difference, doesn't it? Well, yeah. the Holy Spirit. Well, Jeremiah, just why don't you just come on yeah. and give him a good <laughs> excited about uh, the blessings of the Lord being poured out. Uh, anytime God's people come together, He doesn't fail to pour out. Amen. Now whether you get it or not, that's nothing up to you. Come on. <laughs> Amen. 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 You know, I uh, my background is athletics and I play football and uh, you know, I got out of it what I put in. You zero, you put zero in, you're gonna get zero out. So we are excited about being able to be a blessing to you this evening and that time. My prayer is just one person. Come on. One person will leave out of here just a little bit better. Yeah. 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 So we're going to proclaim God's word, and uh, I believe we, saints, the world should look at us and say, those are the happiest people in the world. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's right. That's it. Blessed is the man. Come on. Scripture says. Amen. That walking not in the council of the God. You know what that word blessed means? And it's original like happy. If you're blessed, you're supposed to be happy. I think I'm looking at a bunch of blessed people. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You alive to you here today, you're blessed. Amen. Don't let the circumstance, I tell you what tonight, what you need to do, just take about the next 5, 10, 15 seconds. And just drop off your problems at the door. Come on, come on. Yeah. Then let Jesus pick them up when you get ready. Hey. Uh -huh. Amen. Hey. So you know, so you pick them up. No, you let the Lord pick them up. So I don't, I don't say that from a place of, well, man, he just had a good all his little life. Mm -mm. Come on, talk about it. Our life is a testimony of faith workers. People walk up to you, they don't know you, they just look at the, they're looking at the results of faith, and they think, man, you done had these. Come on, come on. <laughs> no, I'm blessed. Yes, yes, yes. And then God know how to take a mess and bless it. Come on. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Amen. I don't know if that, that's, you know, I was sitting there thinking my wife and I, man, we feel like I'm like, we two hood rats. <laughs> and you know it was just yesterday, Brother Mark and Karen, that, that we were in Phoenix City, Alabama, on the other side of the railroad tracks. Come on. Social economically, guess what? The percentages say we would be where we was at. Hello. Come on. You don't have to worry about percentages when you're dealing with Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> so I'm number eight of nine. Children, Columbus, Georgia, alcoholism, domestic violence, PTSD from my father, World War II vet, fourth grade education from my parents, both my parents had fourth grade education. None of my siblings graduated from high school. Drugs and alcohol, all of them had an addiction. Every sibling. Come on. Except for me. Met my wife when I was 17. Married at 22. This year's 40 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> All the University of Alabama. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. 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 Amen.
school at Alabama. Whoa! Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. So how'd you do it? Give me a moment to preach this word tonight. Come on. Man. We got time for everything. Things that really matter. Come on, man. You know, I didn't I didn't become an NFL <coughs> player for six years, starting from my rookie year on. If I didn't take the time to get some expertise in that area. Come on. This man said here, when I was talking about being happy, you can truly say, man, I ain't happy. Well then you gotta take an assessment of what am I investing in? Who am I investing in? Come on. Come on. Brother Taylor just said here a moment ago, you know, about Jesus. So it's all in who, who, who are you? See, God's no respect of person. That's right. That's right. So you can, I, I just realized at an early age that in my teenage years, 13, I mean, I was needy. When it rained and it rained in your house, and you realize you need it. Yeah. Yeah. Decent roof, keep nothing down. Amen. Amen. It's cold, it's cold in your house. I got to the University of Alabama in 1979, and the uh, first time in my life, Brother Mark, I could hear the button super heat and that came on. Come on. <laughs> and this guy got his suitcase to leave. I asked him, where you going? I'm going home. Cut me out with a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> Three meals a day. <laughs> it's all in how you view the glass. Right. The glass of life. Half you up your half full. How you view it. Come on. Come on, man. And let me share something with you. Your opinion doesn't change truth. Come on. Man. Your, the world's opinion doesn't change truth. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter how many folks are on the man. Read the scripture. God drowned up everybody except hey. <laughs> that will give you a little bit, a little bit about him, who he is. He drowned everybody except for eight people. <laughs> what about all the millions of pigs? I, I don't believe it's gonna rain. I don't believe it's gonna rain. I, that, that's my, I don't believe it's gonna rain. I don't believe it's gonna rain, brother. I don't believe it's gonna rain. <laughs> <laughs> chapter 4 verse 7 is where I'm going to be at tonight. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Come on, man. That the excellence of the power whoo! Powerful words in this thing already. Yes. Yeah. May be of God yeah. and not of us. Yeah. And the Lord had a read to his, to his word, the hearers of the word. Amen? Amen. Y'all be seated. So, I, to, I, I'm in my 22nd year as chaplain at the University of Alabama. So tonight I'm going preach to preach a message to you uh, that was this, this message, this verse that you just read is, uh, if you go back around 2017, 2018, we won a national championship against Georgia. How many of y'all remember that game? Yeah. Overtime, two or two, to Devontae, Devontae, y'all remember that? Yeah. Yeah. We got some young ones back down. They, they was in the womb. They got their hands up. I'm like, yeah, it was some real growth time. So, so yeah, I, I, what I want to do tonight is, you know, what what people have a problem. You read the word, man. People have a hard time believing. So I'm gonna talk to you about some stuff you've seen. Well, I seen it, and then maybe you can believe it, and then you start reading the people of the world. They get the scratch in their head on the road on this. See, you didn't do that when you were learning your ABCs. <laughs> Amen. When you're scratching it, when, when they was teaching you ABCs, why would we do all that when we read the word of God? Come on. Amen. 
I, we live in the same world. <laughs> Amen. You get to the word of God, we get to scratch. Yes. I don't know. Get to doubt. That's right. You didn't doubt when you were learning what the colors were. Come on. And make fun. That way. Make down, make fun. Come on. Then come to the word of God when you can be blessed mightily. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> he all around. Oh, he got time for that, huh? Oh, you know, Sunday night, this place, many problems people got, we all not even have room. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what you need to leave when I hear say, amen, it's going to rain. Amen. No, I remember, right. it's raining. Yeah. Already. Right. Hey, you better go get an umbrella. Yeah. You better go get a boat. Yeah. The word of God. Amen. Jesus is the he's the, he's the ark. He's the boat. You better get on board. When these lines you know what I'm telling you? Then you better yeah. get on board. Get on. So I'm going to talk about a football game that a lot that, that's a that I coach. It's a golf. Mm. I know. I'm in the stadium every weekend during the season. A hundred thousand people praising. Get their praise on them. Get their worship on them. They ain't got nothing Sunday. You want me to clear? You want me to praise? Lift me to Spanus. Oh, have mercy. Come on. Come on, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Great sport, terrible God. Amen. It's a great sport, it's a terrible God. It is, it is. Come on, Thank you, Jesus. So, this verse I read to you, all that year our theme was in pursuit of excellence. Come on. You know, it's December. Hopefully, in December, you're, you're wise enough that you now slow down enough to start assessing what 2023 has been about. Amen. You're supposed to be this the month you start assessing the good, the bad, and then planning for 2024. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Yes, amen. So what I want to do tonight is give you <coughs> Encouragement that for 2024 you be intentional about the pursuit of excellence. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yes. <clears throat> that you leave here and you make a commitment over the next few days. Lord, place in me a spirit of excellence. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> My wife and I. She's been working with me to serve down at the University of Alabama for these 22 years. For about a 10-year um, span, we, we did Bible study every Tuesday. And we have to trek all the way back to Birmingham. Tuesday night Bible study. Get in at 1, 2, 3 o'clock. Ministry of students. Those students went on. Some of them got married. We married them. Come on. Some of them are in our church today. We just, when I get up at 5 o'clock with a little group that I minister to at 5 o'clock at the local YMCA, it didn't matter what time I got in. See, I figured out I don't have but one time in this life. Come on, come on, you see, you better work while it's day. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Let me check, let me give you that. Because all of us are going to get a reward for the other side. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. That's really what, what why am I why am I I tell Jim, I said, you take December off. I said, brother, you I, my love relationship for <clears throat> the hops family why I'm here. We put in about 72 hours last weekend. Friday to Sunday night there in Atlanta and Birmingham. My wife and I, we are associate pastors at Covenant Airs Church in Birmingham. We 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 handle the intercessory prayer team and the young marriage that are 40 and under. 
So beside what we do, I'm just giving you now, you, you, you can get a little feel for who you, you got talking to you tonight. Okay? Yeah. So we have that ministry, then we do ministry at the University of Alabama with our football team and our coaches. And during the season and off season, we have a Bible study. Last August, we baptized Bryce Young. Oh, yeah. well, I got a picture on the phone, I can show it to you. Powerful time. My wife was with me. Just a powerful time of what, uh, And so we, it, the ministry is uh, God is moving. He has been moving. And his, everything you see on the championships at the University of Alabama, the foundation of that is the Word of God. Oh, that, that's the foundation. Come on. And Coach Saban has been so gracious to let that happen. To allow the ministry of the word of God to his place. You're not just looking, well, they just got a good foot. Yeah, I just, no. Why? Why is it? Why is there a spirit of excellence? That stuff don't just drop out of the sky. Come on, man. Don't guys just, you don't just have your lucky day. Oh, yeah, that was 4 31 was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Amen. Come on. Way before the fourth and thirty-one, you know what you had? After the South, South Florida game, you had a twenty-year-old young man named Jalen Milrow that called my, text me, said, "Hey, we got to start praying this week." <laughs> my, 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 my. What day of the week? When can we start praying? So when adversity hit, he humbled himself. I'm giving you the insight now. You follow Alabama, what have you seen since the South Florida game? The very next week, what did you see? He went from starting to losing the game, not starting to whoo, whoo. How come? Because he humbled himself. My, 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 my. Come on. So, man, I need the Lord in this adversity. I need God. I need Jesus in this adversity. And we started praying, and he's been perfect. Every bit of it. Every time. Hallelujah. Challenge you this night. You humble yourself. Come on, man. Yeah. Let the Lord give you a spirit of excellence. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> you started being in pursuit of Lord, well, you know what? I'm going to pursue. See, how do you think you and I got saved? God pursued us. Amen. Right. You know what? Once he captured your heart, then you know what he said? Now pursue me. Come on. Where you at, saints? Oh. Well, if you've been falling a little short, you can leave out here tonight. Said, you know what? That's how you spoke to me about my fire. Come on. Some of you watched the game last week, didn't you? You know what we laid on that game? You know what went before the game? The word of God. Yeah. Give you the scriptures. So we just laid the word out there. And guess what God does? God precedes you. Oh, you can get more hard people to believe that. Let him go before you. That's what we do. And then, you know, I mean, God saving his soul riches. Jeremiah, I have heaven. Boy, I take this word and I, I just challenge you to try that. Amen. Open up the word. Get in the word every day is what I'm saying. Focus on the word. Meditate on the word. Put the word and put God before you and see what he does. Yes, man. You know what Alabama had to do last week? In the natural. Alabama had to go beat a team that hadn't lost a game in two years. Now I'm going to 
had to beat that team to win the SEC, but then had to go from to, to, to go from number eight to number four. What would you have been betting if you had to put money on that? Some of your battle fans, you don't want to put on it. But you know what? That's why you got to know the word. So we went to Psalms 133. How good and how pleasant we are when brothers and dwell together. In what? Unity. Oh, Said an anointing flow. Like it did on air. Oh, y'all. Mm. You, know, you get to the end of the, you know what the word of God says? That's what God commands his blessings Come on. forever. So what do we say? Hey Amen. We're gonna go out here and play as one. Come on. Mm. 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 Can you put that one, Psalm 133 up there? Mm-hmm. Look at you put that up there. Look at this, bro. I, you know what? So you know we were sitting there talking about the chapel. What if what if marriages became one? Oh. Right. Oh, mm. oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together. And what? Unity. Yo, we was telling. Play as one man tonight. Amen. Play as one man. Amen. You know, I told him, I said, you know what? It doesn't matter how many people don't believe the word of God. That doesn't negate the word of God doing what he said he'll do for those that obey him. So you know what God did? He blessed us with victory and he blessed us with playoff birth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's my job as a chaplain. To do what? To, to, to take them into the blessing. Yeah. Not to get them. Yeah. 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 About 20 minutes, you know, just do a few, few, few words, though. You know. No. You came here tonight, you're supposed to get blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Come on. So what you've been seeing, and the, the theme for this year, Brother Mark, has been a, a season of greatness. You know what our foundation verse is? Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Whose image and likeness am I looking at right now? Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Let them have dominion. Y'all told my guys, dominate. Dominate your position. Oh, this, you can't tell them that. That comes out of the Bible. Well, what are you supposed to tell them? Right, brother, come on. How else are they going to fall in love with God? If you can't help them with what they got to do every day. Oh, the word ain't for that? Jesus ain't for that? Because he's the word. He don't, he don't want to go with them everywhere they go. He don't want to go with you everywhere you go. He don't want to be with you everywhere. That, he's supposed to be your confidence. So as we look at preaching this word real quickly tonight, in pursuit of excellence, you know what that word excellence means? In the Greek, it's the word hyperbole, exaggeration beyond. Hooper Bolo. Yeah. So in the Greek, it meant that they, a man could, a woman could take an instrument, a ball, and throw it beyond what they could measure. Mm. That they couldn't physically measure how far you could throw it. Mm. We got a church that's sitting just saying, I'm all right. Mm. Let me get win one or two here or there. I don't need to be a champion. <laughs> Jesus is a champion. Amen. 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 And let me ask you, the work that he did, is it beyond measure? Yes, it is. Can I share something with you? Yes. Mine should be and yours should be. Power of leading a person.
person than Jesus, and they walk with the Lord, and you take that one life, in one there's many. I challenge you for the year 2024, say, Lord, I don't need to witness the 50, 60, just send me the one. Yeah. And what can happen with one? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah, what can happen? Come on. It's beyond measure. Yeah. That's the power of the Spirit of God living in and through you and me. gas in the gas tank to get to the next gas station. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> so he says, we have this. Can you go back to that second? Corinthians 4, 7. Now look at this verse because we're going to get ready to close with this verse. I want to give you three words that you need to pursue excellence. Three words. You will remember three words. But we have this treasure. So what's the treasure? God the Holy Spirit. Yes. So who lives in you and me? Lord have mercy. Now you see why I was telling my players, dominate! He spoke and, and created the world. Yeah. Not just this one. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Right. So that's who's living in you. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm, I'm the kind of fella now. I'm telling you, when I play, I own it. They get a, a yard. I'm mad. I'm mad. <laughs> oh, ain't talking about scoring. I played on that left corner, Black Grand Market. I don't, you don't catch a ball today. I got him, I don't catch a ball today. Oh, he told me, talk about right, man. I tell you, wait a minute, man. I got him. I got him. I got him, man. Throw it again. Throw it again. Come on. Teach you to preach like this in seminary. It's all about. It. It's all I teach you, preach you, seminary. Amen. Come on. So, you got to treasure where? In the earth. No, that's us. Yes, I'm looking look at it. the beauty of God's creation. Come on. Isn't it amazing? We don't even see ourselves that way. Mm. Lord have mercy. Yes. That's just what every person in this room is beautiful. Amen. You're beautiful. Amen. Amen. God says, I'm rejoicing over you right now. Amen. Come on, man. As I said, that you didn't even catch it. When I said that, you said, that's me. That's me. You know, I became a great player. Time to go to Brian said a word, I call. <laughs> Sitting there right on the front row. Come on, talk about it. Come on, bring it down. Come on. Because I was me. I had an alcoholic mother. Domestic violence. Oh, just drugs. I how do I win over all this, God? Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on. Not sitting to like this, my lot in life. Come on. Come on. That this is the way I spoke to be for me as a black man. Come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus. You know, you know what you have a hard time convincing the body of Christ of? That God loves you. Amen. When the last time you meditated on that? What I just said. Why? Because that's why all your power flows from. Amen. Is the love relationship with your Heavenly Father. Yes. Right. 
every circumstance, he has power over. Yes. He'll start realizing, God loved me, he loved me. He's going to give me authority, power over this. Yes. You know, I told him I played, played with last week. Yes. Two words I told him to go out and play with, based on that Psalm 133. Anointing and authority. Woo! I said, play in anointing and with authority. Hey, oh. uh -huh. You know what we're supposed to be living with? In the anointing with authority. Yeah. Right. Amen. Come on, Woo. Not sitting up just taking everything that comes. I didn't say you stop it, but guess what you have authority to speak to it. Yeah. Come on, man. If you can speak words and eternal life comes, I don't have to tell you quick, I, I don't ever say I'm broke. Mm -mm. That ain't my, that ain't my word. My word is my money in circulation. I can tell you, five children in college, guess what? That, man, I, you know what? If you're in the middle, you're like, man, where it coming from this money? It's in circulation. <laughs> Circulate, yo. Yeah, let's go and drop it at P.O. Box 382514. <laughs> Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> <Bell, Bell, Bell. laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, our youngest son, if you, you, you keep up with Cable. Yes. Out in California, had the last role in April was NCIS Los Angeles. We'll give you testimony on that. He decided to move out there in 2013. Just up and moved from Birmingham to Los Angeles. You don't even know nobody. <laughs> and in five years, six years, you end up on CBS number one show. How did that happen? Well, if I pull my phone out and you looked on it, Tuesday mornings at 6 a.m., he and I have a prayer time that goes back for years. Six o'clock in Birmingham, four o'clock his time. Faith works. What's wrong? People ain't working. We would get up and pray. Some morning then he <laughs> Take a hip 10, 15 minutes and wake up. Four o'clock. I'm giving you. Put it up. He spent four years on that show. I'm giving you the end, the behind the scenes of what made it happen. Six of eight, man, and we just, brother Mark, we would just get in that place and the spirit would just pour out of prayer. 2019, we're going on family vacation. This, this time of the year, right here, in December, we take family vacation. 2019, my mother had just passed in May. He's flown from Los Angeles to Birmingham for his going vacation. He gets a call from his agent and says, hey, you got to fly back to Los Angeles. You have to do an audition for this TV show. And Cable's money was tight. It was in circulation. <laughs> he said, I can't. He says, don't worry about the audition. I'm not going to fly back out. Within minutes, the agent called him back. See, they going these CBS wants to see you so bad at audition, they're gonna fly you out and fly you back on their dime. They're gonna pay for it. He flew out, did the audition, called me, said, Dad, I believe I got the job. So how you know so soon? He says, producer, they don't talk to you. They you to let your agent know, say. When I finished, he said, you got a few minutes to come to my office. <laughs> Sit down with me. Say it again, sister. God's, God's favor. <laughs> Are you positioning yourself for favor? <laughs> People doing everything to get themselves out of position for God's favor. Come on. Saints, I'm giving you some powerful stuff. <laughs> I'm basically telling you how to be blessed. <laughs> You can go pull up NCIS the last four seasons. He's on it. 
Let me tell you, that show was already, the season had started. God's favor was so powerful, they said, we're going to write you in. Come on. They wrote him in, Brother Martin. Wrote him in the show. Didn't wait till the next season, Brother Jeffrey. Wrote him in. Signed him to a three-year contract. Signed him one and gave him a signing bonus. So say, hey, guess what? Here you go from, you ain't had a job, and now you got, you on the number one show. Yeah. And then this is what the producer said. Said, Caleb, we were looking from New York to California for somebody to fill this room. And if you go do research on his, his history, he didn't have enough credit for that role. Y'all, y'all should have got it. Oh, I got mine coming. Oh, it's coming. I know it's coming. You know what's wrong? Some of you ain't but no one shot away. You scared to shot. Got to be all sophisticated and submitted. <laughs> He taught me to walk in. I'm, they're, they're going on at the universe right now. That's beyond that. That's what I'm talking about. I called a young man. He was at Alabama 20 years ago, Brother Mark. And the way I found out, she was reading out of the alumni magazine. She said, You know a gentleman named Ken Vandenberg? I said, Yeah. So he's featured in the Universe of Alabama alumni. She starts reading. I'm like, Ken did all that. I gotta call him. I got his number, called him up, brother Jeremy. Let me tell you what this is. He was a walk-on. UAB med school. Democrat. <laughs> Navy SEAL, Whoa. eight years, three tours in Iraq. Come on. 40 years old. What you gonna do? <coughs> hey, I'm on. So I'm talking to him. He's a coach. Can't remember them Bible studies. <laughs> You know what comes to my mind, don't you, Brother Taylor? Beyond measure. Amen. 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 20 years ago. He said, Coach, I still got the Bible study notes. Beyond measure. You got to get revelation on that tonight. God, help me to understand. You created me for beyond measure. I don't compromise with that. I don't compromise with that. We've been put here to be a living example of the living God that created heaven and earth. You don't compromise that. So what's the first word you in pursuit for 2024? Of excellence. Character. Spirit. 
spiritual character. Walking in character. High integrity. Doing the right thing. Where's your character? What is your morality like? We're living in a world cares nothing about it. They don't laugh at you and mock you for having been a man or woman of character. That's right, Moms and dads, right. your children need to see your mom and a dad that's a man and a lady of character. Yeah. 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 Why? Because the, almost the house that we, we are building, the foundation of it is your character. Yeah. Right. Right. Your character makes your name. So you, your character makes your name. Yes. If you show me a person of character, I show you a person that's got courage. Mm -hmm. Here's the second word. What did Joshua them went to go into the land and take Canaan? He said, be strong and you know, of what? Good courage. You're going to be a man of what? Character? And you got to have courage. You got to be Jesus strong. You know what I like to do? Jesus, not, not Jesus strong. Because he got all the power. Be Jesus strong. That's right. Character leads to courage. My third word, commitment. Woo, what's happening to that word today? Amen. Oh, oh man, don't get me. I ain't gonna come in. I ain't come in. I ain't come in. <laughs> but yeah. you want greatness. Yes, 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 yes. Coach, I want to be on the championship team, but I don't want to come to practice. Lord, I want your blessing, but I ain't going to tithe. You try to preach turn around, talking about money. Can we help you something? What you sow, he says it's going to be pressed down, shaking together, running over. So you're going to get more. Excuse me, English. You're going to get more than you sow. I, don't you like that deal? Amen. Yeah. Hey, I like that deal. We don't like that deal. I'm saying if you're gonna get mold, then you saw it, baby. Come on. I know y'all wonder why you jumping around up there like a little rabbit. Because I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Amen. I'm blessed. Forty years of marriage. Six children. Ten grandchildren. One on the way. I'm glad. Come on. I'm glad. My wife didn't have to come get me out of the home dump last week. Come on. Hey. Amen. Because what? I got character. I come. I got courage. I come. I'm committed. Come on. Amen. To my Lord and Savior. Who else? My family. Challenge you as I close. You take some time tonight, yes, tomorrow, the rest of this month. Say, Lord, give me revelation. Yes. Of what Brother Jeremiah was talking about with this excellence. What's the first five letters of excellence? It's excel. Mm. Excel. Mm. It needs to be your mindset. Yeah. Right. The way God trained me in it was, I didn't have the measurables as a five, nine, hundred and sixty pound meekness and man. How do I make it up? I made it up with him. I made it up with Jesus. He took me from Central High School to an All-American at the University of Alabama to NFL Player of the Year in 1988 with the Denver Broncos. <laughs> Side to follow Jesus. 
Saints, I share with you, my, I grew up in an alcoholic home and mother that had a real bad problem. Anyway, the Lord gave me a vision as a 13, 14, 15 year old that she could be sober and safe. So that's what I started prophesying. I was speaking over her as a teenager. My mother came to the Lord in 1984 at 52 and never took another drink. Yeah. Eleven years later, I had a brother that was murdered, and my wife and I, it was New Year's of 1996, we were walking in the house that day to visit her when she was getting the news on the phone, and uh, so she's getting this news, she hangs up the phone, and this was her response, this is exactly what she said, she said, baby, that was a uh, chaplain at a prison in, in, in uh, West Jefferson Prison. And uh, she said, the real victim in this wasn't your brother. It was the man that did the killing. And God downloaded that in my spirit. She and I spent the night that night. I got out on the side of the bed. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to pray for you to share the gospel with that man. Yeah. And uh, I prayed that. That's the type of obedience we need to have, saints. Amen. Amen. What I learned that day from my mother was it's not about reacting, it's about responding. When circumstances come, learn to respond. Anyway, so I prayed that two and a half years went by, Brother Mark. And I had coached a young man and his father, I was coaching high school ball, his father had a ministry at the prison where the man was at. He asked me to go do a chapel service. I spoke at the chapel service. One of the prisoners said, hey, did you have a brother named Joseph after the service? I said, yeah. He said, well, the man that killed him is in this prison. He doesn't know what I prayed two and a half years prior. He says, we do these chapels every week. He said, we go every month. He said, well, you come back next month. I said, y'all come back. I went back the next month. He had went and got that gentleman, and that gentleman was sitting on the front row. So I walked in in the back, and I see him when he made eye contact, and the Lord said, go to him. And saints, this is what I learned, that love initiates. You want to know why walls and stuff hadn't been broken down? Because you had love initiated. So when I got within arm links of that man, I'm gonna put it this way, that Holy Ghost took over. Any of y'all know what I'm talking about? 
the Holy Ghost, it was from off like I was sitting there out of my body watching my body be like a robot do everything the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, embrace him. And it's what the Spirit taught me in that moment. This is how I embrace you and your trespasses and sins. Jesus. And I'm standing there right here. He can smell my breath. I can smell him. That's where we're at. The Lord said, tell him that Jesus loves him. Mm. My, my, my. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. set me free. I don't know how you two be killing your son. But I want to let you know I've asked God to forgive me. Amen. Let me ask you something. Do you have a love relationship so close with the Lord he can use you to help set the enemies free. That he can assign to you a job that will help set his enemies free and they come to know him. Amen. That being said, if God, by his Holy Spirit, can cause a man, a woman, to forgive somebody in that capacity, yes. how much more can you be forgiven tonight? Can I be forgiven tonight? Yes. By God that loves us yes. multiple times more than we can imagine loving yes. somebody else. Yes. While the Holy Spirit's moving right now, if you're in this place where you never head bowed, and you need Jesus Christ in your life, and you know you need the forgiveness that he gave at Calvary, why don't you right where you are, just slip your hand up right there. We're gonna, we're gonna pray for you right now. We're gonna believe the Lord, amen, to touch your life tonight. As you surrender to the Lord, the Bible teaches us that if we'll confess our sin and believe in our heart, that Jesus Christ died on the cross, that he is the Son of God. He paid an ultimate price, was buried and resurrected, that we could have this eternal life. Reach out to him right now and ask forgiveness. Believe you me, he loves you more than you love yourself, and he cares more about you than you'll ever be able to comprehend. Reach out and receive him right now. Father, forgive us tonight, Lord God, as we confess to you. Lord, we trust you tonight, Lord, and by your overcoming power, the blood of Jesus Christ, God, that cleanses us uh, from all unrighteousness. Uh, Lord, touch us, every person in this house tonight. Uh, Lord, to save the lost as they repent of their sin. Uh, God, give us encouragement, Lord, the ones who are saved that know uh, that we need a spirit of excellence in this last hour. God, we need character, courage, and commitment. Uh, and Lord, let it flow through us even right now as a starting place and a starting point. Uh, God, for us to be in a position uh, that we need to be in order for you to do uh, what you need and want to do in our lives. Uh, we trust you for it, Lord. We believe you for it right now. And God, we look to you as author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Someone will pray with you tonight. Anyone else need prayer tonight? Come on, as we stand before the Lord tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yeah. 